Hello everybody. Today we're going to do input and output files. So let's start with some output files. What output files are useful for um, is that they can save your data even after you close the program. Um, so let's get started here. Um, let's ask the user what uh, to name the file. Enter a name for the file. Um, input file name. And then here is where um, the action happens. Open the file name that creates the file for output. That's the type of file we're doing here. Um, as and then this is called the handle and you can it starts with the pound sign and then you can name it whatever you want it's basically um, kind of like a variable for input and output files and other windows as we'll see later in in uh, some GUI programming um, so I'll call it save or something like that um, and then here we can just print instead of printing to the screen like that we say print to the uh, the output file with the handle like that, comma, and then whatever you want to print. And then once you're all done printing whatever you want, you just print close and the handle. So, whoops, I spelled enter wrong. Enter a name for the file. Let's call it output.txt. Now the the extension can pretty much be anything you want, but I just I just make it text just so that you can open it with notepad and it's pretty standard. Anywho, now where it saves it at is the folder you have um, the the program, the basic program saved it. Um, so in my case, it's the just the version 101 folder where it's got all this junk in it. So just find your file, and there it is. Manamana, do 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 do, whatever. Anywho, so um, that's. That's the output files. We can do something more fancy with it. Um, let's make it so that we'll have the user write a story or something like that. Um, so we'll tell them what to do. Print, whoops, write your story. And then, hmm. How about we do this? We have an array called text. Let's make it big enough. How about a hundred? <clears throat> but not too big because we don't want it to eat up extra memory and stuff. Um, and then I suppose we want to know how long the story is going to be just to keep things simple. How many lines is your story input integer n um and then to write the story we'll just uh we'll do for i equals one to n um input from the user text and stored in element i next and then we'll have them enter a name for the file um, and then instead of this junk right here we'll do a for loop to print it all back for i equals one to n um, that would be print save txt i 
next. And that's that's all we need here. So let's try it out here. How many lines is your story? Let's say oops. How many lines is your story? Five. Write your story. There once was a girl named Bright whose speed was far faster than light. She traveled one day in a relative way and returned on the previous night. Uh, let's just call it output again. And there it is. I should probably mention I didn't make this up. Although I'm not sure who did, so... If you wrote it, just tell me. I'll credit you. Um... Where am I going? Let's see. Okay. Now let's talk about input files. Let's say you want to read a story you already wrote. How do you do that? Well, first of all, let's write the option to do that in here. Um, let's have this be the beginning here. Loop branch label there. Um, print, would you like to one? write a story to read one or three quit input answer let's do since we have three integer options here let's do a select case using the, the variable answer case one um, go to we'll call it um, write case two go to read and we'll make these later um, in case three go to quit and select you can also use if else whatever <coughs> But this works too. So, at this point, here we have, this is where we write it. Um, after running through this subroutine here, I mean subroutine. After running through this um, branch here, we'll return to the loop. So go to input loop. Um, then we'll have the loop for, I mean the, the branch label for reading. And here is where we will talk about input files. Um, first of all, let's, let's have them, uh, let's have them have the user ask what the name of the story is the, the file name enter the name of the file for the story you would like to read input file name and then here we have similar um, Similar syntax for the output, only instead of output, we would write input. So open the file name for input. It's coming in as, and then another um, another branch label. I mean, bleh, I'm getting my words mixed up. Another handle, handle. Um, what should I call it? Let's call it load. So, how are we going to have it read it? 
you know what, I'm thinking of changing something here. How about way back in here we save how many lines it is at the top of the file. Um, print save n. So now when we read the file, input um, load n. Now we know how many times to loop around. So let's see, at this point we can um, do 4i equals 1 to n input load text at i next uh, and you know what we can print it out all in the same loop here so print text at i all right, um, then we close out of that um, input file and we're done with that branch. So we can go to the input loop. And finally, we have the option to quit and then we just stop running the program. All righty, I think I got everything I wanted to. Let's see if it compiles. All right, let's uh, let's read one I already wrote. Um, it's called Bad Story One .txt. There once was a programmer that forgot how to program, and then became a short order cook. He never changed professions again. The end. Thus, the name Bad Story One. <laughs> let's write another one. Let's say three. Once upon a time, there was a YouTube channel named DTH Rocket. It became a very popular channel and everyone subscribed. The end. Oh, well, let's call it Bad Story 2. And there it is. So, now you know how to use input and output files in your program. Um, before I end, I'd like to show you one other thing. Um, it's a program I'm currently working on called Spaceship Chop Shop. Basically, it's a um, basically a computer-aided design for model rockets. It's a design and simulation software. It's only about half done. But, uh, yeah, so, but what I'd like to show you about it, well, first of all, it's got all these flashy, gooey things that I'll show you how to do later on. Um, but specifically, there's a way that you can um, use file dialogs, which are built right into Windows that you can use in BASIC. And so it makes the this, the opening and saving process a lot more streamlined and easier. Um, so this is pretty cool. I'll, I'll show you how to use these later on. But just for now, know that they're out there and maybe you can do your own research. Anywho. What? Oops. Oh well. <laughs> it's a work in progress, as I said. And the program. Well... That was that for input and output files. So long, folks, and see you next time.